Our guest today is the secretary designate of the newly formed Department of Innovation and Technology. He is also the state of Illinois' chief information officer. Our guest today uh, leads 1,700 IT employees and over $1 billion of technology budget. He earned, he earned his MBA from Kellogg and his undergraduate degree in computer science from MS University, Baroda, India. And as Ed noted, he's so smart, he brought his beautiful family and his wife with him today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause and welcome Hardik Bhatt. Hardik, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jay and Ed. It's always been a pleasure to come to the City Club, although um, it is my first time I've spoken. This is my fifth time speaking at the City Club. First time uh, without having Paul Green at the head table and speaking that. So I th our thoughts go uh, for Paul and his family. It was always a great big deal to have Paul uh, be being here. Um, but uh, if I'm in 18 months, 19 months in the job, and I still feel like every day I wake up, it's my first day in the job, that kind of excitement. Every day when I go home, I like, feel like I've done, I've climbed Mount Everest, and I feel that satisfaction. I, I'm extremely happy that with the achievement that uh, we could make, uh, we could do at the end of that day, and at the end of the month, end of the year, end of 19 months. Um, and that could not really have been possible without uh, having someone like Bruce Rauner uh, heading the state as the governor, understanding the value and power of technology and uh, bringing uh, people from outside to uh, start changing the culture, changing how technology gets done at the state. It's really uh, a great privilege to uh, provide technology that improves customer service and improves government efficiency for 13 million Illinoisans. I mean, when I step back and think about what we can do or what we do and what we can accomplish for the 13 million people, it's really humbling to really think uh, not many people get this kind of an opportunity. I mean, if you think about that. Uh, so really, it's an honor and privilege to be in this position I take every day, uh, not granted. It's really uh, an honor to be, to be there. So what I wanted to do today was, I know I've come here last year and I, I told you the horror stories of uh, uh, how technology was getting done at the state, and I gave you a plan that this is how we are going to do uh, what we uh, were planning to do. And I wanted to give you an update of what we have done in the last uh, 18 months, or last I spoke here, September, so 14 months. Uh, but also, we have been able to extract uh, some lessons learned that could be applied to any digital transformation of any organization at the scale that uh, the state of Illinois is. So it is something that I wanted to make sure that it is time well spent for you if you think it is, and you can take it back uh, to other customers of yours, or organizations uh, that you are leading digital transformation for. So just to reset where we were when we started last year, state of Illinois was in the bottom fourth of the 50 states. Uh, we had C plus ranking given by the digital government, digital states survey. Uh, we had, we were the third highest spender in the 50 states, so tremendous disparity between how the dollar gets spent and what the outcome do we get out of that. We had um, thousands of uh, applications, thousands of systems, multiple silos. We had cybersecurity worries that we were, uh, that were not allowing me to sleep at night. Uh, and all of those things we started, and then from there, we started our, our movement. As I told you also last time, our oldest system dated back to 1974. So we had, and then the first term of the administration, the first term of this administration ends in 2019. So we had a huge gap to cover, 45 years of gap to cover, and we had to cover that literally in four years. Because again, technology was moving extremely fast, and if we take 45 years to cover 45 years, there's no way, there's no point in doing that. So literally it meant you want to travel 450 miles in four hours. How fast do you have to go? Math? About 110 miles, 111, 112 miles uh, an hour you have to go in order to cover 450 miles. If you have to stop for gas, if you have to stop for food, if you have to stop for anything, crying baby in the back seat, you have to add those times because, you know, state of Illinois, crying babies. We have to add those. 
I'm, I'm talking about the, the bottlenecks that we have. So we have to add that time to that. So we have to literally travel at a, at a pace that not just the state of Illinois, not a government, but in general, a private sector organization of this scale has not seen before. So what we braced ourselves for is something like this, which was white water rafting all the way, no smooth sailing. Starting day one to end of day, uh, year four, white water rafting for everyone in the technology team, everyone working with us, everyone in the vendor community. We were not going to stop to breathe. We were going to only make sure that we make necessary stops for filling our tanks and again, starting again. So it, was, it has been for the last 19 months, and you ask my team who's here, they know it's whitewater rafting for the last 19 months, and it's not going to, it's not going to stop. We're going to continue at that pace. I closed my presentation at the City Club last year at, on this Steve Jobs statement because I, we truly believe in this that we are here to make a dent. Otherwise, why would we be even here? This is the, this is, we believe in this statement. My team believes in this statement. And we have, I want to report a progress. I want to start this presentation on an extremely positive note. In the last 18 months, we have been able to make a big dent in the status quo in technology at the state and we have that also has been validated externally remember i told you we were bottom fourth in 50 states as it came to technology outcomes the latest survey came out in september 2016 and state of illinois now is top third of the 50 states we have moved thank you We have moved from bottom fourth to top third, but we still have a long way to go. But we have lots of things, especially uh, in the last 19, 20 months since we started this journey, we have added leaders one after the other. We have extracted leaders from uh, the existing organizations across the state of Illinois. And it is that team that has come together to make this journey from bottom fourth to top third in the, in the last 18 months. So at this point of time, I'd like to request the Do It team to stand up and be acknowledged. Thank you. Thank you. And I also want to make sure that, you know, uh, I've been putting so many hours in the last 18 months, even after I left my nice job at Cisco and coming back at, uh, at home and trying to come home every night, uh, but someone who let me, lets me do that, put more hours and spend more time at work and be passionate about what I'm doing, my wife, Jagruti, thank you very much for making that happen. And obviously, my parents and their blessing, my aunts here too, so thank you very much for your continued blessings. So as I said, what I wanted to share with you today was six key lessons or steps that, in our opinion, we've been able to extract in the last 18 months that we think that this is how we did this journey in the last 18 months. Uh, as I walk you through these six steps, I'll also tell you uh, some of the key action steps that we take, some of the key uh, projects, accomplishments that we had, some of the key challenges we faced. And then I'll also talk about some of the leadership characteristics that we could derive from this leadership team that we have assembled and from the governor and uh, governor's office leadership as well as the agency leaders like Chris Meister sitting here that have kind of supported us, helped us, and then uh, give you a key takeaway from there. So first one uh, is, and by the way, I did not build this presentation in November with that last picture. I built it in, in August. That's how faithful I was that this is the year. <laughs> I should have done it in April, yes. Actually, I could have done this in last October because the signs were there. Um, anyhow, so the, the first one is, um, as we think about 21st century digital transformation for any organization of this scale, you have to, first of all, have a clear focus on transformation. So as the governor came in into our first CIO council meeting, his clear marching orders were, I want to give a 21st century enterprise to the citizens, to the taxpayers of Illinois. Uh, and they have been deserving that, they've not been getting it. So IT, technology, your job is to enable that 21st century enterprise, plain and simple. So we, what we did 
was we went on a big listening tour. We came back and we charted out our journey. 45 in four is that key tagline that everybody understands uh, in the team that we have to make 45 years of, of progress uh, in, la in, in the next four years. We charted that out with three-step journey. Step one was improving the business of IT. Step two, improving the business of state using IT, that is improving our customer service. And step three is find an area where we can leapfrog. We don't always have to be Apollo. We don't always have to be 45th or 47th or 49th in good ranking. Why don't we find a space where we are comfortable and we could be number one for a change? In the country, we used to be that. If you remember, railroad, rivers, and you'll hear uh, Jim Schulz, I'm putting a plug in for you. When Jim comes here for Intersect Illinois and talk about what we mean, Illinois has been and what he is trying to bring it to with the uh, partnership with governor. But we, we were in that leadership position. So can we find an area where we can become a, a shining beacon, a lighthouse for other states to learn from us? And we thought that smarter state would be an area. So. Uh, I'll talk about on this slide, uh, step one and step three. Step one, improving the business of IT. And again, I told you last time, we had tremendous silo, number of silos in our um, state of Illinois organization. Every, there was a state CIO, individual contributor in the governor's office with no direct reports. There was a deputy director in uh, Bureau of Computers, Computer and Communication Services within an administrative services agency. And then there are 38 different CIOs reporting straight up in the chain to their directors working, focusing on their agencies. So literally 38 silos, every dollar that was spent on technology was divided in 38 before it should, uh, saw the light of the day. So that ended in uh, 420 different ERP systems, 50 licensing systems, 38 asset management. I can go on and on and on because we never thought enterprise. And, in, and, and we actually spent six months starting June of last year reaching out to all of the uh, agency directors, CIOs, CFOs, chiefs of staff, and telling them the, the, showing them the business case that if we can bring IT resources together, we have a, close to a billion dollars of resources. We have 1,700 people that we spend a million dollars a day on, just on people, on their salaries and overhead. If we can bring those resources together and focus on prioritized efforts, we can start uh, changing uh, the, the trajectory of state of Illinois. And with that business case, we got everyone, almost every agency directors agreed that that's the right way to do. And they said, let's do it. So January 25th, the governor, uh, through an executive order, created the Department of Innovation and Technology and brought those 1,700 people together, brought that billion dollars spent in a coordinated way, and that first time in the history of the state, we had a methodical way of doing technology, and we added innovation charter to that. So we had, finally, we had a Department of Innovation and Technology. So that's one of the big things that we had. Thank you. The second thing is cybersecurity. I mean, if, if you were in my position in June of last year, I could not sleep. I mean, two nights ago, that was another thing that happened. But I just could not sleep um, uh, la in June of last year. And that was the reason was we did an assessment of all of our systems. And you know, we were sitting on a very precarious position. We were sitting on a huge a ticking time bomb of unprotected information and product protected data. So what I had to do is I had literally had to start right away saying that we need to start protecting information, we need to focus on cybersecurity, but then I had to find somebody who can come in and have sleepless nights so I can sleep. So we brought Kirk Lonbaum, our CISO, on board. So he's, thank you, Kirk. So again, for the first time in the history of the state, we have an enterprise-wide chief information security officer and a team that we build under him, and we have a cybersecurity strategy. Go on doit.illinois.gov, and Kirk's, uh, our strategy, our comprehensive enterprise cybersecurity strategy is on, on um, the doit.illinois.gov, and you'll know how far we have come from where we were in June. We have an executive steering committee made up of the governor's public safety director, IEMA director, ISP director, National Guards, and they are the ones who are driving our cybersecurity strategy. It's not driven by IT. It's not driven by a bunch of mainframe people that really have to make sure that they are doing their jobs right, but it is driven by the business. So cybersecurity was another thing that uh, I would put in the, the improving business of IT. 
And the third thing, I won't, there are so many things I can tell you. I'll just focus on a few. The third thing is getting procurement done. I mean, you all know this, right? It takes, uh, and I, I said this in one of the events uh, uh, in April, that on an average, it takes about 18 months to finish a big procurement at the state of Illinois. That equates to getting two babies, one after the other. <laughs> That's a long time. How can you wait for that long? So we basically said we need to cut that in half, at least, you know, to nine months. Uh, and we almost had it. Uh, one of the ways to do that was, so first procurement took longer. So I, I'm talking about the IT resource provider, ITRP or multi-step. So in, at the city of Chicago, if you remember, we had, and we still have that, uh, what we call the uh, pre-qualified consultants pool. So that we can actually quickly, we can pre-qualify a bunch of consultants, various categories, and then we can select from those categories based on the scope of work that goes out, comes out from various agencies. That could have easily been there in the state of Illinois, but state of Illinois procurement code does not allow request for qualification. So we had to do something different where we can pre-qualify the consultants and then we can do what they call the invitation for bid, IFB. And we uh, published that in July of last year. By April, we had awarded, 70, awarded to 77 vendors uh, to do work with us. That included 33, I believe 33 or 34, uh, MBE, WBE, DBE vendors that could do business with the state. Uh, it took, we, we just lost focus a bit for the last few months, but this week we signed 60 of those 77 contracts. So we'll be able to do business easily with you. And we have a process that is now going to be published to the vendors, the vendor community, as well as to the agencies as to how can they leverage these contracts. So it's basically bringing this 18 month long process down to get some consulting work done, down to literally within a few weeks. We'll be able to publish an IFB and choose the, uh, the vendor from that pool and they can start working with us. So that's basically improving the business of IT. We had a, going back to, we had a key focus on consolidation. I call it M&A, basically, acquiring 38 different entities and merging them and running it like a business. Uh, we had cybersecurity focus, which is not just state of Illinois, but it's a global focus that we have, and then try making, making sure that we are doing business with you in a good way. So what we had to do in this is we needed an action-oriented team, a visionary team that gets, the, gets everything and, and, and starts running uh, with the ball. We needed to be innovation hungry. We needed to be uh, peered and partnered with the business. So our IT department, innovation and technology department, is not run by Hardik. It's not run by IT. I am the CEO of a billion dollar startup that reports to a board of directors made up of agency directors, governor's office, and the budget office. So, so it is not an IT shop. It's an IT business uh, reporting to the uh, board of directors accountable to the taxpayers. So that's basically how we look at step one. Step two, I'll come back to in a moment. Step three is we had to find a place where we can uh, literally leapfrog and take leadership position. So with my experience in smart cities, working with Cisco as well as the city of Chicago, I found that you know, there are three uh, specific roles that a state government can play. One, in a smarter state, uh, we can be a customer. We have public safety, corrections, public, uh, ju uh, criminal justice, public health, transportation. All of those smart city solutions are easily applicable to a smart state to make the government efficient. So we started looking at us as uh, uh, basically a customer for smart city solutions. The second role is state as an enabler. I mean, we have tremendous uh, rule-making, policy-making authority, and we can actually use it positively to improve economy around IoT, smart cities, uh, in cybersecurity, in uh, analytics, in mobility. All of those fields, we can start focusing on much more, much laser-focused on entrepreneurship, innovation, incubation, and that's where we partner with our Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. And then we can also focus on building talent and workforce because again, if you know the way the technology is moving, the way the technology curve is moving up, creating productivity and creating jobs, we really don't have those curriculum and those kind of uh, talent that is available to fill those jobs today, tomorrow and five, 10 years from now. So we can start focusing on state becoming an enabler and Illinois becoming a hub for IoT and the 21st century technology, we can do that. And the third role is state as a demand aggregator. And I'm so glad the mayor of Rockford, Larry Morrissey, is here today. Rockford is a great partner. Think about 
you know, Chicago is a prime location for a big city, for smart city solution providers, you know, 400,000 light poles. But when you go out, outside of Chicago, you don't have that big of a town. You don't have those uh, large cities, large population density that becomes a target for a solution provider to get the right ARPU for them. So we partner with cities like Rockford. We are looking at putting our fiber, state owns 2,000 or leases 2,000 miles of fiber that can become an equalizer for putting these solutions on board. We also have joint procurement authority. So I, we have contracts with Microsoft, AT&T, Verizon that every government body in state of Illinois can leverage and buy off of. We are looking at now creating and, and having those joint procurement contracts for smart city solutions. So Rockford, Sandwich, Peoria, all of these uh, cities can buy off of those contracts and implement smart city solutions. So the idea here is we don't want pockets of smartness in Illinois. We want the entire state to be a smart state. And we've already been recognized as the number one state to be even thinking about this and having a vision and a plan. We had an event in April. We have a workshop coming in December. We have an IoT center of excellence built in the government, inside state government, 11 different agency CIOs or CISOs part of that, Kevin O'Toole who is a program manager for that and we are working together as a team on that uh, for making Illinois a smart state. We also have advisors from outside that are helping us how to move this. So the thing is we have found an area and now we are trying to become the number one state in that area that we can become. So the takeaway from here is for, to keep focus on transformation, you need to first build a good story as to where you want to go. And then as a leader, you need to be a good storyteller. You need to really take that story and, and make sure that you're connecting all the dots to that story so you have a clear communication that you can do. Number two is building a winning team. And you just saw the entire team that stood up here. One of the ways that we uh, went about, the governor is extremely uh, clear about transparency and making sure that everybody knows what we are doing. There's nothing to hide. So those of you that, have, that are following us on LinkedIn, on Twitter, you know we've been out and about. We are telling you exactly what's going on, what we did, what's coming. And that also what that does is when I talk about IoT, people are like, oh, wow, government, Illinois, talking IoT? Amazing. When I talk about, I'll soon talk about blockchain. And the blockchain. So suddenly now we are creating curiosity in the market saying that state of Illinois is doing something different. This doesn't seem like my dad's government. This seems like a much better, younger, different government. And we've been able to attract CEOs, presidents, and, and all in all private sector career people inside. And also we have done the same kind of communication inside and we've been able to find people who wanted to step up, who wanted to provide innovation at the edges and bring them in and start building that team. And that's the team that has been basically carrying this ball for the last 18 months. So we have been able to map talent to vision. We have been able to mix internal, external people. And what we learned from there is we have been, identify, we've been able to identify and develop leaders. We have delegated versus abdicating stuff to people. And then we have been able to up everybody's game. So what is here is the power of one is only a partial truth. There is something called power of one. You can have one leader who can come in and change the trajectory, but you need a team that carries the ball forward to success, to the goal line. Number three is we focused on building a borderless culture. I told you about all the silos that we had. Uh, and in month of June of last year, we started building uh, working groups. So we had work 11 different working groups in which we put, I had a great uh, uh, resource called CIOs. We had 60 plus CIOs in all of the different agencies. We brought them together, put them in various working groups, innovation, mobility, cybersecurity. So apart from running your agency technology, you can also build enterprise technology strategy. And the way we built that enterprise technology strategy and Mike and Marion Cook played a key role in there is we actually, if you go on city on doit.illinois.org website, you will not find a 600 page document that says this is Illinois strategy. What you will find is for each horizontal and vertical, a one page strategy, which will tell you where we are, where we want to be, how are we going to go there, what are the low hanging fruits, and then what are the bottlenecks that we might, what are the issues that we may face. And then associated with that, you'll see a video. You'll see a video of the leader that's driving that strategy, execution of that strategy. Gone are the days when people are going to print 600 page documents and read other than RFPs. People are consuming content on video and that's what we are giving them content in. And that's basically what, uh, how we could 
uh, build that working groups. Three of those working groups became centers of excellence, mobility, IoT, and analytics. We also, apart from building those, uh, breaking those silos internally, we also uh, build the advisory board so we can break those borders between the private and the public sector. Now we have to be very careful with our procurement guidelines and SB 51 and everything else that we don't inadvertently get you uh, excluded from an RFP. So we've been very careful, but again, the idea here is we need to build a borderless culture, and we've been able to be, we have been successfully able to build that borderless culture. I told you June we started building working groups. In March, we had our CIO council meeting, 100 people in the room. I asked them, how many of you are not in one or the other working groups? No hands were, no fingers lifted. Like literally everybody in the room was part of a working group. We all work together. It's no longer I work for DHS, I work for HFS, I work for ISP. We all work for the state of Illinois. We all work for the state of Illinois taxpayers. And that's what we are trying to do. And what we have done is literally a continuous leadership development, continuous learning that we have done. And what this has, uh, we've been able to establish here is culture change. We did not take it on as a project. Culture change automatically happened. Uh, we just literally gave people what they wanted. We gave them a way to bring that innovation to the fore, and then automatically culture started changing. If you come to, uh, to Illinois State Government in technology today, you will not believe that what it was two years ago. It's totally, totally different. The fourth one is we never forgot that customer has to be at the center. Customer has to be at the core and what, is, what does the customer want? We sometimes don't know. What the customer, when the customer comes into HFS, they give some data, they give to DHS, they give some data to them. We had to start thinking about the end-to-end -end experience for a customer from beginning to the end, every channel that they go through. They call us, they walk into the office, they get mobile, they get on the website. We have to give them seamless experience. And for that, we had to know a lot more about customer. How do we know a lot more about customer? We have so much data. We have petabytes of customer data. And how did we go about that? So obviously I, I told, and I've said this many times, that we have no shame in stealing ideas. We have no shame in copying, configuring, and applying and implementing those ideas here. So at very early on, we went to Indiana, we learned from Indiana, and they asked us, I, we asked them, like, if you had to do something different, because they are regarded as leaders in analytics, in government, in state government, what would you do differently? And they said that we would do a master data agreement because somehow for governments inside, inside the silos, we don't like to give our data to, the, to our, our partners in the next agency and the next agency. So what we did, we took that idea and we took a very, very bold but very um, scary step. We brought 13 different agencies together and we had 16 lawyers and we asked them, why don't you go in, bring a master data sharing agreement, have everyone sign that and come out. I mean, having 16 lawyers in one room, it's a very, very a difficult thought. And our general counsel, Mike Basil's here, and he was part of that group. But lo and behold, they actually went in. They built a master data sharing agreement. And what took Indiana 18 months to sh start sharing data, we finished that in seven months. We learned from them, we applied, and now we can easily share data between 13 different agencies, and we are adding more agencies to that. With that data, now we are building 360 degree views of our customer, child, senior, uh, families, offender. We can look at the entire history of the, of the customer. We are building those things. On the other hand, we are building predictive analytics, so we can start helping business start making decisions using the data. So here, basically, customer, is still the king, and customer data is also a major, major player in what we have been able to do. The fifth key step that we did was jumpstart and quick win. I mean, this is the best time to be a CIO, I'm telling you, because you can literally deliver wins every month, and that's what you need to do to maintain your credibility. The first thing we did, I told you about 420 ERP system. So we took the uh, previous administration's procurement, which was done very well, we finished that procurement negotiations, we got the contracts, we kicked off ERP on SAP in July of last year and October of this year, we rolled out state's first ERP system. We have now, state of Illinois has an ERP system. Some agencies are already on ERP financials. We are gonna roll out more agencies 
uh, on board, and then we are also going to start HR, and pretty much in the next 38 months, 38 to 40 months, the entire state. And this is the beauty of this. It's not just about the executive branch. The comptroller's office is in this, the treasurer's office in this. So if you want to really make a change, it really doesn't matter what party you belong to. Technology can bring that change and bring that easily. The other thing that we have done is, you know, uh, my parents are here, and then my mom, 72, she is much more familiar, much more easier work with, to work with on an iPhone. But we cannot give them applications on iPhone because we state do not, did not have a mobile infrastructure. We did not have focus on mobility, but we brought that back. We have Ramnath Kadambi here from ISAC. Him and Mike Wands, they work together. Now we have a mobile framework infrastructure ready. Since July, we've been rolling out an app a month. I mean, it's that easy. And it's also very working together as an enterprise after this, go on your iOS, your App Store, uh, or your Android uh, Google Play, and look up Illinois first. Because what happens is when everybody, like 38 agencies, start building uh, mobile apps and mobile responsive things, it's very hard to find that service on your mobile. You know there are thousands of apps on your mobile. But if you download Illinois first, we have brought all of those mobile action together into that one container. So you'll be able to now find various things that you have to do. Again, remember this, we are always about roughly right. It may not be perfect, so give us your feedback, and we'll gladly take that and proudly update Illinois First and put the next version out, and we'll be able to. So the idea is to bring the government to your fingertips, and that's the innovation. That's jump-starting and get delivering quick win that requires decisiveness and bias for action. And last but not the least, the most important thing is the transformation can never be about one person. It's not about Ricketts or Epstein or Madden or Rizzo, or, or it's not about an individual, it's about the team. It's about everybody, it's about, it's not just about Bruce Brown or Hardik Bhatt, it's not about one individual, it's about the entire state of Illinois team, and it's about the entire state of Illinois citizens and taxpayers, and everyone that use, that use, gets services from the state of Illinois. So we've always been able to think about that, and the three things that we always remembered is take the blame, share the fame, and this is important in Illinois, avoid the shame. We have to always make sure that we are not cutting corners. Even though we are going so fast at the speed that we are going, we've always been very cognizant of the fact that we have procurement rules. We have, we have to make sure that we are not creating problems for anybody as we are moving at this pace. And we have been able to really do that by staying humble, ethical, showcasing others, showcasing successes of all of the, what we are doing in technology is not for the technology's sake. It's not for the Department of Innovation and Technology. It's for our customers, which are the agencies, and for the customers outside uh, in, the, in, the city of, in the state of uh, Illinois that are using the services from us. So here's uh, the key thing is, we have to make sure that the followership is also as important as leadership. Each leader has to follow others also with great ideas. So with these kind of key things, we've been able to bring Illinois from the bottom fourth to the top third in 50 states. We've got ERP, we have a centralized IT department, we have governance, we have EPMO, we have cybersecurity, we have mobility, analytics, we are focusing on blockchain, we have borderless culture. We literally have everything that a billion dollar technology organization has that enables a 60 billion dollar organization like State of Illinois that can serve 13 million Illinois because we are running technology inside the state government as a business and we mean business. We want to make sure that we are providing the services that the state of Illinois deserves and we are turning the state around, helping the governor to st turn the state around to give them the 21st century organization that Illinois taxpayers deserve. So I really want to appreciate and thank you for the time that you have uh, given. I also want to thank you, all the vendors that are sitting in the room for sticking with us uh, for the last, we, you knew 364 out of 365 days, we did not have a budget, but you all continue to work with us. When people ask me, how do you get these things done without a budget, I show them this room. This is the people, these are the people that, that really stuck with us and made sure that we are continuing at the pace. And those 1,700 employees and this leadership team, all of us, we have come together. One mission, we have to turn around the state and, we, and technology becomes the enabler for that. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Hardik. Um, anybody has any questions? Ah. Pre-submitted questions. This is not like, you know, the CNN debate or anything. <laughs> okay. Hardik, thank you very much. Have you had a drink? You know, my question would be, what do you do to relax? I'm good. Absolutely. You know, the average human being speaks at a rate of about 150 to 175 words a minute. We may have a new record world holder here. There you go. Okay, the very first question from City Club member Leighton Olson. Um, it's about internet public trust concerning the smart state and local initiatives. What are some examples of the demand side aggregators such as hospitals, libraries, and schools? That's a, that's a great question, Leighton. Your questions are always great. And I know you, uh, where is Leighton? Oh, there he is. And I know you've been in touch with uh, Lori, and you've also been in touch with Andrea, and we are trying to make sure. One of the things that we are trying is if you remember, uh, uh, Governor Quinn had a broadband deployment council, and it was basically from the broadband stimulus money that came uh, to the state, we had to make sure that we are uh, doing those projects in the right way. We are trying to turn that into Smart Estate Enablement Council, which is basically how do you enable a smart state? How do you enable the use of technology for better health care, for better education, for better transportation? And that's basically what is happening. For example, in Rockford, uh, the mayor wants to build Rockford as a healthy platform. And that healthy platform also needs that backbone of, of fiber, and fortunately, ICN, ICN has a big presence, a, a major pop site near Rockford that we'll be able to uh, put to use and start using Rockford as, a, as an example of how do you provide smart healthcare and build a city as a healthcare platform. So those are kind of the aggregators when you talk about the cities coming together, the hospital chains coming together, the school districts coming together uh, to start using technology and infrastructure as, as an aggregator. Thank you. Um, next question is from uh, City Club member Carlos Ponce. Carlos, where are you? Right over here, table 10. Hardik, what would you recommend to the Trump transition team about technology? What should they do first? So um, let me remind you that I have worked uh, for a Democratic mayor, and I keep reminding this to the governor all the time, that I work for a Democratic mayor, I am working for a Republican governor. Technology is nonpartisan. Technology is all about creating opportunities. Technology is all about improving customer service. Technology is all about improving efficiency of the organization that technology is enabling of that. Uh, I've been, we've been in constant communication with uh, uh, Department of Commerce, NTIA, NIST, uh, Department of Homeland Security. Kirk uh, and his team are uh, speaking with the Department of Homeland Security around uh, what, what is the role of government in uh, IoT security. What happened a couple of weeks ago with uh, distributed denial of service attacks using rogue IoT devices, what, what is the role of government to start preventing those things? So we are in constant communication with them. Uh, I would say the federal government always has to play a proactive role as it comes to looking around the corner and see what kind of technology is coming, what's the private sector building, uh, but at the same time, do not start over-regulating that. Because let the entrepreneurs kind of build new stuff and the standards will come slightly later and then we'll be able to build to that. One of the, idea, one of the uh, discussions that I had with uh, NTIA uh, and with the Department of Commerce is we still are very under-invested uh, as it comes to infrastructure, technology infrastructure. So if the focus is on infrastructure, uh, brick and mortar is good, but let's start thinking about technology infrastructure because as a, as a society, as a country, we need to start really uh, moving forward at an aggressive pace and an accelerated pace, and technology infrastructure is going to be crucial for that. Thank you. Our next question is from uh, Bianca Utzhoff with the Netherlands Consulate. Bianca, where are you? In the back. Ah, way in the back, okay. Um, how will you work on helping startups grow and strengthening the startup ecosystem in Chicago and throughout Illinois? Sure. So uh, those of you that uh, know, all of you know 1871, right? 
How many of you know that seed funding for 1871 came from the state of Illinois, not from the city of Chicago? There you go. Only a few people know that. 1871 seed funding did not come from the city of Chicago. It came from the state of Illinois. Because we have that kind of seed funding availability that we can put in the incubators, uh, University of um, Illinois uh, Enterprise Works. There are 200 incubators operating in the state of Illinois right now. I also visited one on the 63rd Street that Bruce Montgomery runs. I don't know if Bruce is here. But that's one thing that Department of Commerce is doing phenomenally well. And IFA, I'm sure, has a key role to play uh, in there. Uh, the other thing that we are also doing is hosting entrepreneur showcases. So how do you create opportunities for entrepreneurs? You have to connect them with the corporate. We are so blessed with a phenomenal corporate base that we have here. All of the various verticals, we have major players in Illinois. And we are, by entrepreneur showcase, we are bringing entrepreneurs who are building new businesses and introducing them and giving them a platform to present to large CIOs, CISOs, and C chief data officers so that they can, we can start making connections. We already have had a few entrepreneur showcases uh, taken place at 1871 in, within the state government, and we'll do many more of those so we can create opportunities for entrepreneur. We also did an agreement with the state of Telangana in India where we are trying to see how can we open international markets in smart cities for our entrepreneurs. And we'll do many more of those agreements, obviously, led by the Department of Commerce and supported by the Department of Innovation and Technology. Are, were you referring to um, what we think is the October 16th letter between uh, Illinois and uh, Hyderabad in India? Is that Correct. That's uh, Illinois and the state of Telangana. Hyderabad Great. is the capital for that. Um, this is from Don Davis, who's with the Browner Group. Don, where are you? Right over here. Is the state using drones? Uh, we have a drone task force to figure out what can we do with drones. I mean, there are many applications, especially in the public safety area, uh, that, uh, that can really benefit from drones. Uh, and we are exploring options of what, what that is. But at this, at this point, we are trying to understand the technology and the applications of that and the drone task force uh, in, on which we have our director of uh, Illinois Emergency Management Agency, as well as the state police and a representative from the Department of Innovation and Technology. So we'll come back to you on that, maybe in the next presentation. Okay, Don, keep, keep that, okay? Um, Hardik, this is from Chris Lathan, who's with MXO Tech. Where's Chris at? Back there. Um, what's the greatest positive impact that you think do it Illinois can have on educating our state's youth, specifically via public school systems. Our states, I'm sorry, what was that? Youths. Youths, uh, through, through that. So first of all, let me tell you, this is the most number of questions I've gotten at, in my five outings at City Club. <laughs> so thank you very much. It must be very interesting. This is City Club. We're always ready. This is ready. amazing. This is amazing. No, it is, it is actually uh, extremely important, right? I mean, if you think about this, uh, over the last hundred years, uh, technology progress, what it has done, and it has created job, it has created improved productivity immensely. But at the same time, it had also created jobs and has created income. But if you look at a graph, uh, that there's a couple of studies that I've come across. In the last 10 to 15 years, the way the technology progress has happened, the technology has uh, created immense amount of productivity. But for some reason, the jobs and income have not kept pace with that productivity. Because what is happening is more and more tasks are getting automated. And that's what is going to happen. It's not going to be, it's not going to slow down. It's actually going to go faster and faster. Technology, as you think about it, who knew that we will operate everything that we can from a small device in our hand. 10 years ago, that was unheard of. But today, we cannot think our lives without a smartphone. That's even going to enhance, uh, accelerate in the next few years. So we have to get our youths ready for that. So STEM education, I know I'm, I, I'm not going to go too much detail into the education stuff because Beth Purvis, our Secretary of Education, leads that, and she is the right person to talk about that. But from technology perspective, we make it a point to go out uh, to speak with the youth about where the technology is going. I constantly go to universities. We also try and go to STEM high schools and talk about what's happening. Uh, Shytech Academy here on the south side of Chicago is also looking at uh, providing education, uh, technology certification as you are in the high school. It is extremely critical to understand the pace of change 
It's not going to slow down. It's going to accelerate. And we need to get people ready, both the youth as well as the people that are going to start looking at their jobs changing significantly because of automation. That's coming, and that's coming faster than we can think. Thank you. Uh, this is from Madeline Shepard with the Metropolitan Planning Council. Madeline, where are you? Right straight ahead. You printed, but I can't read all the printing. That's OK. You spoke about government efficiency. Illinois has over 70,000 units of government. 7,000, I think. She's, yeah. Oh, 7,000, yes. Uh, different departments collect data on taxes paid, government budgets, et cetera, but the publicly available databases are still not available as she would like them. Do you have plans to integrate this and make it more easily accessible to the public? Yes. Open data, most probably you're talking about asking that question. And Kevin Harrison's here. Kevin, can you raise your hand? There you go. Kevin Harrison is our assistant chief data officer. You should grab him before he leaves from here. He's going to drive back to Springfield. Uh, but we have, uh, we have open data. We, I, I'm not proud of the progress that we have made in open data because we have so many other things that we had to fix, the, the basic fundamentals. We do have an RFP. Kevin, is that correct? The RFP is published already? Yes. Okay. So RFP, so we have, we have an existing vendor contract that's coming to an end, and we have an RFP in the market to bring another vendor on the contract that can take the open data from where it is to take it further. The data sharing agreements that we have in place uh, will help us get that data out and uh, published in a usable way. We're also working on, so the, the data sharing agreement that we created, we call it EMU, the Enterprise MOU for data sharing. We are now working on a REMU which is research enterprise data sharing. So we are working on building a kind of a standard data sharing agreement with external entities, universities and others, that it's much making much, it much more easier for them to sign one agreement with the state and easily get the data that they want from the state. So we are working on that. Thank you. I think, I think we have time for a couple more questions. Uh, this is from uh, James Harmoning. James, where are you? Way back there. Great. Um, how are you working with the elected officials' IT departments? What are some of the challenges and the successes you've had? Sure. And Simona here can tell you, uh, Cook County has majority of, most of the organizations are different elected officials. And uh, uh, in, in our case, uh, we have very few. So we have the governor, and then we have a few other elected officials. So I already told you about ERP. We are working with the Comptroller's Office, the Treasurer's Office, and the Governor's uh, Executive Branch. We are all work going to be on the same single instance of ERP. Uh, in terms of uh, other aspects, we closely uh, coordinate with uh, the Secretary of State's Office because when it comes to driver's license and all the other kinds of licensing, as, as a customer, you don't want to go to 50 different uh, locations and give your data to get some kind of a license. We are trying to create a unified customer profile and that's where we interact with the Secretary of State's office. We were part of the electronic uh, driver's license task force that was created by the legislature, and the Secretary of State kind of led that. Mike Wands, uh, was part of that uh, task force. Uh, also, uh, cybersecurity is a key uh, issue, and uh, we, we, have, we are actually doing a comprehensive cybersecurity assessment for all of the executive branch that's mandatory for everybody under the governor, and then we have also extended that to all of the elected offices that our team would come in and do a pro bono, pro bono, right? Kirk, Kirk, yes, there you go. Kirk says yes. So we are gonna do a, we have offered doing a pro bono um, a security assessment of their entire system, all the systems, and identify vulnerabilities that we can then uh, ask them to fix as, as soon as we can, because at the end of the day, Regardless of the elected office, it is my data that is sitting in that office as a, as a taxpayer. So I want to make sure, my as in everybody, each of us, uh, and I will, we want to make sure that our data is secure in all of those systems. And so we are, we are partnering with each of them, all of them, and offering every assistance that, they, uh, that, that we can uh, to help them kind of, again, build the right technology for us. Okay, and one final question. Uh, Sandra Gates, where are you? Sandra is with the Shades of Beauty. That is a great question. What are people concerned about, but no one says? <laughs> That's a great question. How, if nobody says, 
how will I hear? Uh, <laughs> cybersecurity was definitely, I mean, everybody talks about it. Um, I, I think, so if I go back to uh, answering one of the other questions about what are we doing to connect with students, I think people understand that the tsunami of uh, automation um, is coming. I mean, it's basically artificial intelligence, cognitive computing, virtual reality, augmented reality, automated vehicles. I mean, think about this, right? You had the bank tellers 20 years ago, and we have very few bank tellers. Now, the jobs in the banking industry are completely different compared to what they were 20 years ago. Tremendous automation. Uh, the, with the automated vehicles coming in, think about the jobs that are dependent on driving a car, delivering, delivery of um, taxi driving. Uh, we are talking about auto body, body shops. We are talking about insurance industries. All of these things are going to fundamentally change in the next 20 to 30 years. Those jobs that are existing today, those businesses that exist today, are going to be completely different. We need to start thinking about how do we prepare for that? How do we become, how do we create a future ready Illinois? How do we take this as an opportunity, not as a threat? How do we take this as an opportunity to create uh, uh, an environment in Illinois, in Illinois, where Illinois actually becomes the number one state in, in this automated uh, straight world that we are going to be in 20 years from now. Not a lot of people are talking about this, but we need to be start getting ready uh, for that reality that's going to hit us before we know it. Thank you. Uh, Hardik, once again, let's give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>